I spent a majority of my early 20s in the heart of Hollywood. So you could say I've encountered my fair share of celebrities. I moved there with the hopes of eventually becoming one. The first couple celebrity encounters were exciting and reeked of Hollywood glamour. But as I spent a couple years there and started to just become another face in the crowd, the celebrity sightings became more commonplace. For example, I've waited behind Jay Moore to fill a prescription at a pharmacy. I've delivered cupcakes to Joel McHale. I've seen Mr. Belding doing karaoke to a room full of drunks. I've seen Alfonso Ribeiro wait for a latte at a coffee bean. I've been yelled at by Lily Tomlin over the phone when I got her delivery order wrong. I've seen Michael Rappaport wearing a Bart Simpson t-shirt and watering his lawn. And I've had Toby McGuire ask me for a kid's menu at the Beverly Hills vegan restaurant I worked at as a hostess. <laughs> I've encountered a lot of celebrities. And over the years, I learned they pretty much suck. They're just humans with the same flaws we all have. Celebrities eventually became this minority of people to me, as insignificant as left-handed people or USC <laughs> undergrads. Sometimes they ended up being forgettable, or known as bad tippers, or rumored to have dated a friend of a friend. They were so ubiquitous at my day jobs, local bars, or coffee shops that I couldn't idolize them the way I used to. After five years, Hollywood had given me a sense of reality about celebrities, but it also given me some rough patches in my life. After plans of pursuing comedy didn't work out, I had a series of quarter-life crises. As it happens, Hollywood isn't a good place to figure out who you are. <laughs> and at a time when most 20-somethings were putting themselves through college, I spent my days wandering around Melrose, making YouTube videos that nobody watched. <laughs> it wasn't long before I actually lost my day job in the recession, and I couldn't pay my bills. My own dreams of being a celebrity had bittered, and I had actually started making parents making plans to move back in with my parents. The dumb, the dumb girl that moved to Hollywood with dreams of grandeur was about to have to go home and tell everybody about how she didn't make it. I did a lot of crying, a lot of not looking on the bright side, and a lot of feeling sorry for myself. But it was all too shitty and sad and too hard to walk away from without feeling depressed. I remember hiking to the top of Runyon Canyon, close to the Hollywood sign, and trying to have a moment. I don't know what sort of moment, a goodbye, an epiphany, or something, but nothing came to me. At that point, I wasn't who I thought I was going to be in LA, but I wasn't the person I used to be back home. I started thinking far back to what was important and what mattered to me before I ever became this girl who wanted to be in Hollywood so badly. The only thing I could remember was a little kid who would sit in front of the TV and watch episodes of Fraggle Rock. <laughs> I was glued to the TV screen watching weird, happy little felt creatures dance and sing. I remember loving the Fraggles as genuine friends. So much so that the first day of kindergarten, where I was told I was going to be making new friends, I was pissed to just find human children and not fraggles like I had been expecting. <laughs> As a little kid, it felt like the fraggles were the only people who got me. Red fraggle especially. <laughs> she was hyper, loud, and stood out from the crowd a lot like me. Red was misunderstood a lot of the time, but she never let it get her down. She always just kept dancing and singing. Two weeks before I left to go back home, a comic book store on Sunset Boulevard was doing a promotion for a Fraggle Rock comic book, and it was announced that Red, and the woman who puppeteered her, would be there for a meet and greet and picture taking. I was 26 years old at the time, and the majority of the people there would be children, but I still wanted to go. I remember walking into the store and seeing Red talking to an audience on a little stage. My jaw dropped and I whispered to myself in disbelief, holy shit, it's actually her. <laughs> <laughs> I got in line to meet her and with every step closer to the front, I felt myself growing younger. 
it was a fraggle. A real life fucking fraggle from my childhood was standing right in front of me. I got up on stage and the woman puppeteering her noticed me. She looked at me and Red smiled and said, I love your hair, it's a lot like mine. <laughs> I was speechless. I couldn't even believe she was in front of me and that I was touching her little felt hand. Honestly, I couldn't believe if you told me she was a foam sock with ping pong ball eyes, she was alive and there, and she was talking to me. And she was talking to the little kid in me who didn't know anything about Hollywood yet. In that moment, I felt the rush of three weeks' worth of confused emotions combined with a high off my own imagination. I struggled to compose myself as, as an adult, and I basked in the pure joy and innocence of my favorite childhood TV character. I couldn't keep it together, and I started shedding tiny, confused tears in between my laughter. I walked in that comic book shop, a bitter 20-something, so intent on proving herself but it all just melted away to the soft spot in my heart that just didn't give a shit. At that point, nothing mattered. Whether I was meeting a celebrity, or if I was gonna be a celebrity, or if I had a million dollars, or if I overdrafted in my bank account, I couldn't care because a fraggle, one of my friends, was smiling at me. We took a few pictures, and then I said bye and sat down in a nearby chair, literally trying to catch my breath. Sitting there, I watched other children with red, laughing and smiling together. It was beautiful and crushing at the same time. It was my first moment I realized I would never be as happy as I was as a kid. After getting older and going through this stupid Hollywood machine, after failing and having to move back home. But maybe back home was where I needed to be. In a town where I had nobody left to idolize, I met one of my heroes that didn't let me down. And it was meeting this quote-unquote celebrity that ended up being the most important Hollywood moment I had of them all. Because I didn't meet a celebrity. I met a part of myself that told me it was gonna be okay to go back home. Thanks. Laura Carvey.